Welcome back to Andrew Says I Wouldn't Lie to You Except for Maybe This Once. And yes, I will be getting a haircut soon. Habib and Conor McGregor. You all saw it. You all saw Conor lose. You saw Khabib choke him. You saw him jump out of the cage and attack one of Conor's team members. You saw another guy jump in and have Conor punch him. And then another guy jump in and punch Conor. So I believe three people in Khabib's team... They're all Sambo fighters. I think one of them was a boxing coach, but they're not just regular guys, so let's make that clear. Three of them were arrested, I believe, and Connor decided to not press charges. They're not giving Khabib his money either right now. The commission is withholding that, so think of that what you will. And I'd show you footage, of course, but uh, maybe we can get away with some in the corner here, but otherwise UFC takes that down really quickly. If you're being like, oh, why didn't he show anything? So they will fight again, and the reason... I say that they will for sure fight again is not because the money thing. That's always there, of course. It's because Connor leaves this as the hero still. When Khabib gets up and he yells at Connor and really wants to shove it in his face, that's fine. And when Khabib throws the mouth guard, we've seen that before, that's fine. But when you jump out of the cage and you make it no longer about the fight, that's when people start to have a problem with it. Now, you can say there's there are a lot of people saying... Um, Oh, Connor and the bus. So oh, what Connor said to him. How can you condemn Habib for this when Connor does all these things all the time and pretty much gets away with it? The difference I see there is that Connor is doing things outside of the octagon. He's not put doing this on anyone else's dime. Sure, it can be misconstrued as bad press if they want to misconstrue it that way, and they can present Khabib as everything however they want to in the UFC. They'll use it in promos again, of course. But when you do things in the crowd and at the venue, then you're endangering people who don't want to be involved with it at all. Of course, Connor did that on the bus, but only Connor's liable for that. Now you have the commission liable for it. You have the venue. You have, you have fans that you definitely don't want to bring into something like this. So it, compl it complicates everything. Insurance problems, it changes everything when it's at the actual venue and the pay-per-view that everyone is seeing. The first thing I thought of was the malice at the palace. Uh, Detroit Pistons, Ron Artest, then Ron Artest. Don't forget, he's Metal World Peace now. Very important point. <laughs> Him jumping into the crowd was the first thing I thought of, but he, Khabib wasn't jumping into the fans. He was jumping into Connor's team. So that's why I think so many NFL players can come back. They attack their wives. Michael Vick. Somebody got mad at me saying sorry, Michael Vick, last time. Sorry to that guy for saying sorry to Michael Vick. But that's why they're allowed to come back. They're not costing the league any money. They're not affecting the game. But this affects what's going on there. So if somebody in the NFL is going out and attacking people on the sidelines, that's way different than him getting in a bar fight, if you understand what I mean. Now, Khabib's actions, uh, do they warrant him being stripped of the belt or having his money withheld? I don't think so. People are saying that they're going to find him about 20%, 10 to 20% of his purse, which I guess is reasonable. But Chael Sonnen came up with a good point that I was watching the other day where he said, who knows what Khabib's financial situation is, and he's obviously not making $50 million like Conor McGregor claimed he would make or could make. Khabib's people have got to be paid. And as much as you may like or dislike him, what about his coaches, what about his blah, 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 all his team, they deserve to be paid. So maybe, I don't know what way around that is. I don't know his financial situation. So you're going to have to come up with something that is fair to him. Stripping his belt is not fair because, I mean, it, it. this is still a fight, isn't it? There's still a lot, like, we, we're okay with all the stuff leading up to it. And then all of a sudden when Khabib boils over, we have to have a problem with it. I don't agree with that. I think you guys treat everybody the same, even though... Um, I may not agree with Khabib, or I may, may not agree with Connor. There seems to be a double standard here. And I think it's pretty obvious that it's because most people, uh, they just pick sides in this. So no matter who wins, there's going to be a 50-50 divide. And that's what it felt like. It felt very of the time when this fight ended. Nobody, we had an ending. We had a concrete ending and an outcome that was not controversial. Um... Khabib had him the first two rounds. Connor won the third round, the first round that Khabib's lost in the UFC. And then it looked like Connor might come back, and then he gets finished. Clean finish, no controversy. And then everything's different when it ends. 
and everybody's just kind of feeling like nobody's happy. Even the people who, who wanted Khabib to win aren't happy, and then obviously anybody who wanted Connor to win aren't happy. So it's very apparent of the times, I feel like, a very split-down-the-middle time where the outcome... There's nothing wrong with the outcome, but it's the aftermath and the buildup that fe- makes everybody feel like they're not exactly happy with how it went. And something else I want to address is Connor said it's never over. So that's another reason why he, why I think it's a guarantee they're going to fight again. Because Connor still comes out the hero here with all the spotlight being on Khabib running into the crowd and everything. And Connor having to defend. Yes, he punched a guy first, but if some. You just finished a fight, you, you, you lost somebody coming in trying to fight you after that's pretty unfair I think it's reasonable for him to try to defend himself in that case and I saw so that's one reason by the way that I think they're going to fight again besides the money of it all but I saw somebody whose opinion I generally respect say Connor gets what he deserves because he's racist and obviously there's more words than that it was along the lines of um Connor's not innocent we'll think about all the bus stuff etc etc and he's just a racist guy so this is what happens when you're racist to that i say um insanity (laughs) because connor the stuff he was saying his man uh habib's manager as a terrorist if he really got pulled off a flight on 9-11 for these reasons then then sure but connor having a problem with him it's very obviously a cultural thing connor's from catholic people obviously the irish khabib's from dagestan muslim russians first of all russians are white khabib's a Russian guy, like, yeah, Connor hates him because of his skin color. That's that's what it is. Even if Connor is saying he doesn't like his people, which he said, or his culture, I don't think he said culture, but that's the general feeling you get. He's criticizing a set of ideas. This comes back to people saying that like disagreeing with religions is racist, particularly some religions, mind you. Um, You're allowed to be critical of somebody's set of ideas. If you're going to openly have a set of ideas, if I'm going to be an open supporter of uh, removing soda in in class or in schools, and are you allowed to criticize that? It's a set of ideas. It's a set of beliefs. Uh, You should be allowed to criticize those. And that's what Connor, I feel, is doing. He doesn't like the way of life. He doesn't like how Habib, who seemingly is very professional, he says he's a very snaky individual. And I get that feeling from him, too. That, uh, because he didn't seem to see anything wrong with what he did. And I think there's a big difference between doing all that stuff in the build-up and getting each other's head. What Connor did was wrong, of course. And to quote uh, Ariel Helwani recently, He said everybody's to blame in this, and I would agree to that to an extent, but I think that Khabib is letting himself off the hook a little bit here, saying, what about Conor, what about this, when he's generally uh, responsible for his own actions, and I see a little bit of, what's the problem here? Why can't I do it? I'm innocent. I see a little of that snakiness that Conor's talking about. So who are they going to fight next? Well, first of all, I see a suspension coming for Khabib. You gotta call him Habib. You can't say the K, or else you're not uh, you're not being cool. Habib. Um, I see a suspension coming from him, so I think Tony Ferguson is the next guy um, who should fight either one of them. And now, if he wants to wait for Habib, then go ahead. If he wants to fight Tony Ferguson, or sorry, if he, Tony wants to fight Connor, then they should go ahead. I think Connor will beat him though. But then on the other side, you've got Nate Diaz and Dustin Poirier. Now, I'm going to assume that Poirier doesn't have what it takes to beat Nate Diaz. From all the trash talking to the jujitsu, I just think Nate's going to beat him. Ring rust will be a thing, however, that makes me iffy, but I think Nate's going to beat him. So let's assume Nate wins, and then we've got, so we've got Nate, Tony, Connor, and Habib, and let's say we can X out Habib for three months, probably. Not sure, though. Three months, I think, at least. Maybe six. Not that that really matters. He probably wouldn't fight again that soon anyways. So do you put Tony versus Nate, Connor versus Nate, or Tony versus Connor? Now, I think, personally, Tony loses both of those fights. It's way closer with Nate. Uh, It's way closer with Tony and Nate than it is with Tony and Connor. The only problem I have with Nate and Connor is they clearly want to save that. They want to save that. 
I'd still like to see Nate fight Tony, and I don't think he fights Tony if he fights Connor first. I think Nate takes off for another few years, and Tony continues doing what he's doing, which is winning, but might not be against Connor. So I think the next logical thing is if Nate wins, Tony and Connor fight, and maybe the winner for that faces could be when he comes back, or if it's way longer than that then maybe the winner of that can face Nate. It's very confusing. It's a very confusing time in MMA. Are we throwing away rankings? If Nate wins, he's fighting, I think, the number five guy. Or sorry, it might be even number three, Poirier. Somewhere between three and five. But if Nate wins, he jumps right back into the top five, essentially. And then you've got Tony and Connor Habib. So it's going to be a very interesting time to see if we go with save super fights, push super fights, or are we going with who pretty much deserves a title fight, and that's Tony Ferguson. Tony beat the ever-loving crap out of Anthony Pettis, who's done. And when I say done, is he's never going to get a title again. That's what I say when I mean he's done. Bad night for the Pettises, both losing. But great fight. So what do I think about Habib, really? Is that he deserves a suspension. Would I hold back his money? No. you got to make that decision pretty quick if you're going to give somebody their money back, I feel like. What if he's got debts? It's not... It's his money. That's how I feel about money. Suspension, yes. You can't do that at the... At the event. And then Dana White said that the guy who came in, who's who's a UFC fighter, I forget his name, but Dana said he's not fighting again. So what I want to know is what you think. What One, what do you think should happen to Habib? Suspension, money-wise, that stuff. And who should Connor fight next? Or who should fight for the title? 